Hey everyone, this is Gabby. Happy New Year. I cannot believe that it's 2020 already. Most of you guys who are listening or watching are probably thinking the same thing. Where did 2019 go? Um, but really thankful that we're starting this new year and I really wanted to get on and share with you all the word that God was giving for me and I believe for many of those listening, a word for 2020. Um, and one of the things that God was saying is that this is the year to not be afraid, but to step out right? This is the time to step out. And what does that look like in each of our lives? And I really believe that this is the year where God is going to be calling us to step out into new things. Maybe there has been ventures or ideas in your heart that God has placed in you. And this is the time now where you get to step into it and see it come to fruition, right? Um, as I was praying for this coming year, the Lord had given me a vision of a speedy river, right? Um, and in the speedy river, we were on a boat, riding it and the lord was saying ride the acceleration that i'm bringing and so we have the opportunity and i know i've been saying this since last year but i also believe this coming year more so than ever this is the year where we get to ride the acceleration that god is bringing to the body of christ and it's the opportunity where we really get to partner with god and i'm also you know believing too um i think this was a couple months ago when i was praying the Lord was saying that 2020 is going to be one of the greatest years where he's going to bring such a huge harvest of people to come back to the Lord. If you had listened to a couple of my um, old podcasts, I had mentioned that during my prayer time, God was revealing to me that this is a season where he's calling back his prodigals, right? And so as the Lord is bringing so many back, you know, so many people back into to him, to his arms, into Christianity, this is a time for us as believers, as mature believers to step out, to step up and be prepared for the harvest that's coming because yes, there'll be many people giving their yes to Jesus, giving their lives to him, but we have our duty to disciple them, right? Like when Jesus left and when, before he ascended to heaven, he told the disciples, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so we're called in the season to also prepare ourselves to step out and to harvest, to disciple these people that God is bringing in. And so today I really wanted to take us into the book of Joshua. During my prayer time and just praying for this coming year, God was really emphasizing to me to, to keep the book of Joshua close in hand. And so the book of Joshua is such a great book to look into because right from the first chapter, we see God calling Joshua out to be a leader, right? To lead the Israelites into their promised land. And this was a new task, right? This was something new that was not placed upon Joshua. And so like many of us with this coming year, I believe that God is calling us to start ventures, to start ideas, whether it's blogging, whether it's starting a ministry, whether it's starting a new career, a new business, uh, ministry, whatever that looks like. This is the year where God is calling us to come, step out, and to follow him. And so when we look at Joshua 1, I mean, the verse that we all know here in Joshua 1, 9, God tells him constantly throughout the book of Joshua, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And so right there, we can see with the fact that God says, you know, do not be afraid, but be bold, be courageous. You can already tell that the task that was before Joshua was daunting. And many of us right now, the task before us may be so daunting and we feel afraid or we feel unqualified. I know for me, you know, this year, God has opened up the door for us to host another Discover Your Purpose conference for this coming May. Um, so quick plug in, definitely come and sign up. I'll put the link below here. But um, our conference that is coming up, it's to empower others to uncover their God-given purpose and potential and to learn how to partner with God with your gifts and creativity. And this conference in particular is going to be really highlighting entrepreneurship and creativity because I really believe that there are a lot of us that God is calling us outside of the typical, you know, career and job. But what does it look like to partner with God, you know, and the gifts that he's given us and how to actually make his vision that he's put in our heart become true? So um, it's $25, it's going to be two days. We're going to be having myself, my husband, Michael, Scott Howe, who is the founder of Evoke Ministries, come and speak and pour into us. Um, we're also going to be having an amazing set of workshop speakers as well who are thriving in entrepreneurship, writing, art, um, fashion, blogging. So it's going to be a great time. But, you know, setting up this conference, it's greater than myself. I We had our conference last year, but it was at a smaller scale. There was about 40 to 50 people who came. This conference, we're really looking into over 100 people coming. And so a huge part of me is like, God, like, am I ready for this, Lord? But in those moments, God reminds me, 
that it's not about myself and it's not about me, but it's him. It's God's vision. And he's appointed us as leaders, as people like Joshua, to lead others into the promised land, to bring God's vision to pass. And so we don't have to be afraid. And what does God say in that verse that assures Joshua? He says, do not be afraid, right? He says, be bold, be courageous, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And so God was reminding Joshua, like, hey, you don't have to be afraid. I'm going to be with you wherever you go. And when you read the book of Joshua, you can see that Joshua was a man who constantly abided in the Lord. He was always open to hearing the Lord speak to him. He always looked to God whenever he was faced with, with roadblocks or whenever he would fail battles. I talked about this in my last video, but in Joshua 7, Joshua had failed a battle. And before that, he was winning all the battles that the Lord was, you know, in instilling before him. But in that particular battle, he, he didn't win. He had sent an army and they lost. And what was the first thing that Joshua does? The first thing he does is he prays and he fasts and he seeks the Lord for a solution. It says in Joshua 7, 6, Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell face down to the ground before the ark of the Lord, remaining there till evening. So you can see right there, Joshua immediately sought the Lord and asked the Lord, God, why? Why have we not obtained victory? And in that moment, the Lord revealed to him that it was because a man named Achan had not obeyed the Lord. He had took upon idols um, from a previous tribe that they had conquered where the when the Lord told the Israelites and Joshua clearly to not take anything that is of the foreigners, but they did, you know, they took their idols and their, um, and their items. And because of that, the Lord prevented them from succeeding. But because of that, Joshua was able to, um, find out that it was Achan and his family who stole, um, they were put to death. And after that, they were able to win the battle. And so God is so gracious and he will show us, he will show us when there are times where we're afraid or when times we have roadblocks and we don't have to be worried too when there are times when we have slipped up or we messed up like first john 1 9 makes it clear that if we confess our sins jesus is faithful and just to forgive us right to make us clean and clean out all the unrighteousness in us we don't have to the difference between the old testament and the new testament is in the old testament they would have to make atonement they would have to do things to redeem themselves but now jesus himself has become a redeemer and so you know, how much more confidence do we, can we have now? We get to walk in so much more glory knowing that we have Jesus, his very blood over us, washing us clean, constantly going with us through this journey. So we do not have to be afraid. But the second thing that I want to emphasize as we step out in the season to where God is calling us to, we have to make sure that we are doing our part in planning, right? And if you go and read from the first chapter, um, God tells the, God tells Joshua, in verses 11, go through the camp and tell the people, get your provisions ready. Three days from now, you will cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land your God is giving to you. And so from there, God is telling them, hey, get your provisions ready, get ready. And so we have our part to do. Of course, God is going to give us and bring us our victories, right? God even makes it clear in verses 11. Um, it says, the Lord your God is giving you your land, your very own land. However, there are still things that we have to do. And so in this season, the second step that's very crucial is we have to make sure that we are doing our part. And so what does it look like to do our part? Um, one thing that's very, very important is that we strategize with God, right? Like create plans, create goals. It's not about, you know, the, the goals that we dream, but it's about the systems that we set. You know, what are we what is it that we are planning to do and that we need to do to get this vision to pass? Because if we don't write down the vision and we don't create goals and, and set a plan to succeed, we won't do it. We can't based on how we feel, right? Like if we want to make a difference in this coming year, we have to be different than what we did last year. Things have to look differently. Um, and so I love this verse here. It's Proverbs 16.3. It says, commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. And so right here, we can clearly see, and your plans will succeed. We have to make plans. And in everything that we do, as we give it on to the Lord and we do it for him, he will establish our plans. Like our plans that we create will succeed. He will bring favor into us. You know, the favor of God will follow us. And we're going to talk about this um, at the end of the video of how to obtain God's favor. Uh, but the second thing is we really have to do our part in planning. And another great idea as well that I would really recommend you guys do this year is to find others to get counsel, right? To get mentoring. It's very, very important. Um, Proverbs 15, 22 says, Plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. 
And so it's very important. Like, I mean, even the concept of discipling, you should always get discipled and you should disciple others. And so even with your ventures and the things that God's calling you to and your new careers that you're pursuing, it's very important to have a group of people that you can trust to be advising you. You know, my husband and I, you know, we even have, we're part of 100X where we get mentored on business you know, in, in entrepreneurship. And so it's, and we also are doing that as well with our 30 day, 30 day jumpstart. Um, and for those of you who are not a part of it, we have already started, but you still can join in. I will also include the link there. But with the 30 day jumpstart, it's, you know, a challenge where we are here to help you jumpstart your God given venture and have that place of accountability and getting, you know, feedback that's going to help you to build with the Lord, to move forward and to create plans that will, actually sustain itself right and, and be committed to that and how it looks like to partner with God but having sound counsel is so important in our lives and as I was praying for 2020 the Lord was telling me that this is going to be a year where he's going to be bringing strong connections into our lives connections that are going to be for the long haul for the decade to come um, all for establishing his kingdom purposes and so take this time this year to pray and ask the Lord to surround you with people that you need to support your new venture, your new journey with the Lord this year, because we were never created to do life alone, right? We can never build a successful venture or business without other people. And so God has specifically surrounded us with people who have the right connections, who have the right skills that you need. And even Joshua, like God even didn't assign Joshua to do everything himself. When you read in verse 12, he says, but to their Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half tribe of Manasseh, Joshua said, remember the command that Moses, the servant of the Lord gave you after he said, the Lord your God will give you rest by giving you this land. Your wives, your children, and your livestock may stay in the land that Moses gave you. But all your fighting men ready for battle must cross over ahead of your fellow Israelites. So from there, God is already telling, you know, he has already set up other people, other men from different tribes to come and help Joshua. In verse 16, it says, they answer Joshua, whatever you have commanded us, we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. And so even Joshua had a group of people that was supporting him. So we have to make sure that we are surrounding ourselves with people who can pour into our lives, who can help us and give us clarity when we need clarity for those who can help. You know, it even says um, in scripture that iron sharpens iron. And so we have to sharpen one another. So we must be open to having others, you know, help us in this journey. And the third thing that I want to talk about that is so super crucial that the Lord has really been putting in my heart for this coming year is abiding in Jesus. And John 15, 5, Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And so that word remain, another um, version of that is abide, right? To abide in the Lord. That means that we must continuously remain in the Lord throughout our days, right? It's not enough just to spend our morning times with Jesus or just a Sunday of the week. We have to constantly be abiding with him because Jesus makes it clear in this chapter and in this verse, especially he says, apart from me, you can do nothing. And so if we want to bear fruit in our works this year, we have to be abiding in the Lord. And something that I struggle a lot with is, you know, emotions, anxiety. And I have to remember as I abide in the Lord, there is no room for anxiety. There is no room for sin to enter when we're abiding in Jesus, when we are one with him, right? And so what does it look like to abide in the Lord? And that's what we're going to talk about today. The Lord had led me to Psalm 27. Um, and I love Psalm 27, 4. It says, David writes, One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek. I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze on the beauty of the Lord, to seek him in his temple. And so that's the key to abiding in the Lord, that no matter what we go through, no matter what life takes us, our main desire is to be in the presence of God and to gaze on his beauty, to be so fixed on his goodness, right? And not our circumstances, because just because acceleration is coming, just because God's favor is upon us does not mean we don't have battles that we have to fight, right? Like Joshua had battles that he had to go through. There will be hardships, there will be temptations. But as long as we fix our eyes on Jesus, nothing else will distract us from deterring from wherever we need to go. And when you read Psalm 27, right before that verse, um, where where David says, one thing I asked from the Lord, right before that, it says, verses three, though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. And so what Joshua, sorry, but what David is saying in that passage is that even though war may break out, even though disaster may be around, 
he will still stay confident in the Lord. His one desire is to continuously to fix his gaze on the beauty of the Lord. And so no matter what we go through, even though when things don't go our way, let us abide in Jesus. Let us look to him, look to the Holy Lamb of God and remember that we can have confidence that the end result is going to be victorious, right? That God is going to give us the victory at the end. We don't have to strive for things. We don't have to be impatient, right? God says, let us run with perseverance. Let us run with patience, right? Hebrews 12, 1 talks about that. Fixing our eyes on the perfecter of faith, who is Jesus. And so we are called to persevere, to be patient, right? To abide in Jesus. And that's the key because there is no way. Jesus makes it clear, like the verse that we said earlier in John 15, there's no way for us to to walk this life victorious at the end, you know, completing our assignment without Jesus. It's just impossible, right? But when we abide in him and we keep Psalm 27, 4 at, at the core of our heart's desire, right? To dwell in his presence, to fix our gaze on his beauty. Nothing can distract us no matter what goes on. Like the Lord was recently showing me, um, I didn't realize this, but I was putting, you know, a healthy marriage above Jesus, right? I was depending my joy on a healthy marriage when really, I have to depend my joy, who I am, everything I am in the Lord. Because when things go bad, I'm not saying that, you know, our marriage is bad. But if something goes bad with the marriage, with the family, or with sickness, or whatever happens, that can't strip away my joy because my joy is in the Lord. And so this coming year, I want to encourage you all to abide in Him. To keep, keep your eyes fixed and gaze upon Him. And that last verse in Psalm 27, it says this, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So let us walk each day having confidence that we will see the goodness of God. Like let us not grow weary in doing good, but knowing that in the proper time we will reap a harvest. Abiding in God is so, so crucial. And um, the Lord was also speaking to me too, that as we worship the Lord, it will bring us to a place of abiding in Him. And so take this year to worship God more, right? Like it's happened to my husband and I, um, in this past few months where we'll just have a song in our heart, you know, um, just playing in our mind. And all of a sudden when we sing it out, the lyrics are exactly what we need. And so that's the Holy Spirit putting a song on you to take you to a place to remind yourself to stay rooted in the Lord, to be strengthened by him. And so, you know, sing songs, worship, make music to God, take scripture, right? Verses that minister to you and make a song out of it. Because when you sing and when you proclaim, you invite the Lord to come in. You, you take your worries away and you invite Jesus in. And when he's in there, there's no more room for worry, for anger, for any other thing that is meant to t pull us away from Jesus. So the last verse that I do want to share here is in Proverbs 8, 34 to 35. It said, blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my door. For whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. So I love Proverbs 8 because that little snippet that I just read to you there shows you the key to obtaining God's favor. And that is Jesus, right? There's three points that this verse talks about. It says the first one is blessed is the man who listens to me. So we have to be opening our ears to listen to the voice of God, right? Spending time with him, asking the Lord for wisdom, for revelation, right? For invite the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, bring me your, your revelation, your wisdom. The second thing we have to do is to watch for God's leading, right? It says watch daily at my gates. And so we have to keep our eyes open because God speaks to us in many ways. He could speak to you through an Instagram post, through a friend, through a sign outside, you know, whatever that is, we have to be watching for Jesus wherever he's wanting to lead us. And the third thing is waiting at my post of my door. It is so important that we're waiting for the Lord, that we have moments in our days where we just wait on God right? Like Daniel was a man who waited for the Lord. He waited for God for interpretation of dreams. He waited for God for wisdom. And when you read Daniel 2, it says, God who reveals mysteries to men, like the Lord wants to reveal things to you. He wants to reveal things about your family, about your situation. He will speak to you in th through dreams. And so all of this encompasses abiding in God. And it is so important that when we enter into 2020, we are abiding in him and with everything that we are, right? With everything that I talked about today um, and keeping those forefront things in mind, right? I'm gonna just give a brief summary again. The first thing for this year is to remember that God is with you, right? Joshua 1, 9, God says, be bold, be courageous, right? Do not be afraid for I am with you. The second thing is to do your part, right? Do your part in planning out this year and strategizing, connecting with others, getting yourself out there, right? Actually putting 
putting action to work, really, and knowing that God will make her plan succeed. And the third thing is abiding in Jesus. So before we close, I did want to pray for you all. God, I thank you, Lord, for those who are listening in, God. Lord, I just pray right now, God, that you would just stir in them, God, a passion and a fire to run with you for, with zeal, God. Lord, this is the year where they get to see you rightly, God. They get to see the vision you have for their lives and they get to run with it, God. I pray, Lord, right now that whatever is clouding their vision, God, that you would remove it and erase it, God. I speak against doubt, God. I speak against the deceiver, Lord, who is trying to lie to them that they are not good enough, that they're not ready, that this is not the year. But God, I pray, Lord, that they will proclaim God, Joshua 1, 9 over their lives, so that they will be bold and they will be courageous, that they would look to you, God. I pray, that God, that this would be a season where they would just be so digged into you more than ever, God. I pray, Lord, that you would just give them, Lord, your spirit of wisdom and revelation, God, upon their lives, God. I pray that you would open the, their ears, God, to hear you more, God, to receive more revelations, that the, your word would be made alive, God, that you would start using the word to apply it into their own lives, God. I pray, Lord, for those who are listening, that you prepare them, God. Prepare them, Lord, to be disciplers, God. Prepare them to receive your harvest that is coming this year, God. I pray, God, just for an anointing over their hands in your favor, Lord, for open doors, God. Lord, that we would, that this is the season, God, that we get to ride the river of acceleration, God. I pray, Lord, that you would lead us as you always do, God. But most importantly, I pray, God, that they would abide in you and that they would fix their eyes, God, in you. So I thank you, Lord for all that you've done and all that you are, God. In your name we pray, amen. So I hope that you've been encouraged with this video or maybe you're listening to the podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to share this. Don't forget also, if you are listening on the podcast, to go on my main page and write a review because the more reviews we get, the more people can be exposed to this. And so, and like I said in the beginning of this video, I will include links to our upcoming Discover Your Purpose conference and if you want to join our 30 day jumpstart, it has already started, but you still can join in. So all of that will be in the link below. So God bless you all. And I hope you have an amazing day.